In this video, we're going to show you how to perform data manipulation in Logstash using the Grok filter. This popular filter plugin will help you prepare logs for processing and analysis in Elasticsearch and Kibana. But first, let's understand why structuring your data is so important before shipping to Elasticsearch. The ability to efficiently analyze and query the data shipped to the ELK stack depends on the readability and quality of data. This implies that if unstructured data such as plain text logs is being ingested into the system, it must be translated into a structured form enriched with valuable fields. Regardless of the data source, pulling the logs and performing some magic to format, transform, and enrich them is necessary to ensure that they are passed correctly before being shipped to Elasticsearch. Grok Filter is one of the most popular Logstash plugins used to pass unstructured data into structured data, making it ready for aggregation and analysis in the ELK. Data transformation and normalization performed by Grok allows us to use ELK advanced features like statistical analysis on value fields, faceted search, filters, and insights-driven visualizations. The benefit is clear. If we couldn't classify and break down data into separate fields, all searches would be full text, which would not allow us to take full advantage of Elasticsearch and Kibana Search. Grok tool is perfect for system and web server database logs and any log format that includes unstructured plain text. Grok filter ships with a variety of regular expressions and patterns for common data types and expressions you can meet in logs. For example, IP, username, email, hostname, etc. When Logstash reads through the logs, it can use these patterns to find semantic elements of the log message we want to turn into structured fields. Grok filter works by combining text patterns into something that matches your logs. You can tell Grok what data to search for by defining a Grok pattern, syntax semantic. The syntax is the name of the pattern that will match your text. For example, the number pattern can match 4.55, 4, 8, and any other number, and the IP pattern can match the numbers that we see here. The semantic is the identifier given to a match text. You can think of this identifier as the key in the key value pair created by the Grok filter and the value being text matched by the pattern. We can express this quite simply using Grok pattern as number duration and IP client, and then refer to them in the filter definition. Logstash already ships with lots of predefined patterns. Patterns consist of a label and a regex. Let's take a look at some other available patterns. We've included a link to the full list in the video description. Another great feature is that patterns can contain other patterns, such as the syslog timestamp, which has month, month day, and time. By default, all semantics, such as duration or client, are saved as strings. Optionally, we can add a data type conversion to our Grok pattern. For example, number num int converts the num semantic from a string to an integer. Currently, the only supported conversions are int and float. Let's take a look at a more realistic example to illustrate how Grok filter works. Let's assume that we have a HTTP log message like this. Many of such log messages can be stored in your log file, so we can use Logstash file input that tails the log files and emits events when a new log message is added. First, let's save the log message above in some file. Next, let's define the Logstash configuration. In the filter part of the configuration, we define syntax semantic pairs that match each pattern available in the Grok filter to specific elements of the log message sequentially. Let's take a look. Make sure you change the path to the log file on your system. In this example, we represented the log message like this. This will add a few extra fields, such as client and method, to the event and store them in the message variable sent to the Elasticsearch metric B index. Let's verify this by running Logstash with the configuration shown here. And we're done. Logstash is running. As you remember, the file input plugin tails the ending lines of log files, so let's add some new lines to the log file to trigger the Logstash file event. Use your favorite text editor to do this. Now let's create a new index pattern in Kibana to see the transformed logs. Once the new index pattern is defined, we can check the Kibana Discover tab. Notice how Grok filter created new fields representing our log message. As you see in the field list on the left from the discovered data, Grok has added the following fields to the mapping, client, method, request, bytes, and duration. Sometimes Logstash doesn't have the pattern we need. For this, we have a few options. First, we can use the Onagaruma syntax for named capture which will let you match a piece of text and save it as a field, 
as you can see here. Postfix logs, for example, have a QID that is a 10 or 11 character hexadecimal value. We can capture that easily like this. To create a custom patterns file, create a directory called patterns with a file in it. Make sure to give it a meaningful name. In the file, write the pattern you need as the pattern name, a space, then the regex for that pattern. Let's use the Postfix QID example from before, then save this to your pattern file. Now let's save the Postfix log into another file. The log should look like this. Then use the patterns directory setting in this plugin to tell Logstash where your custom patterns directory is. Here's how your Logstash configuration should look. If you repeat the steps we did in the previous example, you'll get the following new fields in your Elasticsearch index. The timestamp, log source program, and PID fields come from the syslog base pattern, which itself is defined by other patterns. If the input doesn't match the pattern, a tag will be added for grok pass failure. Here's a couple of examples of using grok filters with common log formats. For example, here we define a grok filter for syslog. This next one is an example of grok filters with nginx. You can also use grok filters with Apache and MySQL, and of course, Elasticsearch. There's an online Grok debugger available for building and testing patterns. We've put the link inside of the video description. The Grok debugger offers three fields. The first field accepts one or more log lines, the second, the Grok pattern, and the third is the result of filtering the first by the second. Grok is a library of expressions that makes it easy to extract data from our logs. You can select from hundreds of available Grok patterns, both built in and supported out of the box by Logstash. Remember, if you can't find the pattern you need, just write your own custom pattern. We hope this video gave you a better understanding of how to extract patterns using the Logstash Grok filter. If you're interested in learning more, please visit the QBox blog where we have an extensive library of Elasticsearch tutorials and learning materials. Thank you for watching.